So on what the heck today we're going to make a cheese board. You start by taking some strips of wood, in this case maple and walnut. Use strips of wood so that it doesn't warp instead of cutting out of one big piece of wood. So uh, bar clamps are the most useful when making a cheese board or a cutting board. Uh, a little wood glue goes a long way and then you just want to put a liberal amount on the ends and then rub it around with your fingers. And then you're just going to put them down and clamp them together. Uh, get them nice and tight and as flat as possible. Um, try not to let them buckle too much. And then uh, reinforce that with some other clamps. Never have enough clamps. So I uh, left that for about 24 hours to dry. Um, it's really hot in Texas, so it probably didn't need to sit that long. But uh, it did, and it looks pretty good. So to get it cleaned up, first I'm going to use a card scraper to try to get off some of the excess glue. Uh, this is my first time using my new card scraper. I uh, don't know if I'm using it correctly. I'm sure someone in the comments will point out that I'm using it incorrectly. Or multiple people will point out with swear words. Uh, I'm taking the belt sander to square up the edges. Um, obviously it's really hard to get everything perfect when you're gluing it up. So you square off the edges. Uh, belt sander is really uh, perfect for this. Um, I don't have a planer. Normally, this after uh, some belt sanding on the edges, it would go through a planer to make sure all the boards are level and help remove that excess glue. I don't have a planer, so I had to use the belt sander to accomplish the same thing. However, uh, I did not film that. So, uh, but needless to say, it really um, knocked down all the high spots, made everything uniform, as you can see. See here it is nice and smooth, so first I want to round out the edges, so just find something round to use as a template. Uh, and make a curve that you're happy with. And then you're going to, you got to cut out those curves. So we take it to the bandsaw and just uh, cut those curves off, just move slowly, follow the line as best you can. Some of this will be cleaned up in sanding, but uh, the, the less uh rough your cut is here the closer the line that it is um the the less you'll have to do afterwards there you go just rounding it out it's already starting to look like something and then of course it is back to the belt sander to help clean up some of those edges just some quick rolling around just, uh, again, just trying to knock down any of the high points. You don't want to spend too much time, especially with a belt sander. It eats away a lot of material very quickly. And then just squaring up the edges once again. Now it's uh, rounding the edges over. This is a round over bit on a router. Um, of course, this is sped up, but take your time here. Um, and uh, make sure that you're getting an even path all the way around. It's very easy to do if you take your time. If you get into a hurry, you can wander a little bit um, and then uh, you have to go back over it, but just take your time. So using the center punch here to start the uh, where I'm going to drill a hole for uh, putting your thumb through to hold the board. So using a Forzner bit here to drill that hole out. Uh, Forzner bits, great tools, however they do re remove a lot of material so they take a long time to cut through so I won't bore you with having to watch the whole video of me trying to cut through this board but it did take a while so now I've got the hole so I'm just going to route out the inside of that so I can have a smooth round over edge on both the top and the bottom and there we go Got a perfectly sized thumb hole. All right, so now it's time to clean up some of that uh, rounding over that we did with the router. So just taking some of these uh, strips of sandpaper, I'm just going to sit here and and use the old uh, cartoon character drawing off its butt remover maneuver, and uh, just clean it all up, make it look nice. Now it's just a lot of sanding to get it to that nice glassy finish. Um, just work your way up through the grits. 80, I think I went 80 to 150 and then ended at 220. 
and 220 gave me a really nice smooth finish. Um, so now I'm going to put the little feet on there so it doesn't wander around while you're trying to cut your uh, various cheeses. And now it's using the booze block oil to uh, do the, the oiling. And you can see how that really makes the color stand out. So you're going to wipe it on. I did several coats as each coat absorbed in. And then uh, now once it dried, it was time to use the cream. And it really brings out a nice buttery finish. And all that's left is to uh, eat cheese. One quick thing, this was a gift for friends. So I just uh, did a little customizing with some strike letters. And there you go. Now I've got a cheese board. Well, they do. Mm -hmm.